know that the full version of the name of the Wu-Tang Clan member GZA is God Zig Zag Zig Allah. Now, some of you may find this very difficult to believe, but this was in fact not his birth name. His mother christened him Gary E. Grice, but Gary E. Grice just didn't slap quite as hard as he would have liked, so he changed his name to GZA. Gary's alter, alter ego within the Wu-Tang Clan was the genius. And he was called this because, amongst other reasons, he used to regularly drop references to quantum physics into his rap ciphers. To make sure that he never delivered any erroneous information to his listeners, he would consult with actual quantum physicists while writing his lyrics. The relevance of all this is that today's hand drink solo wine of the day is called the Golden Phoenix versus the White Lotus made by Caravelle Wines. And this wine was inspired in part by the exact same vintage B-grade kung fu films that inspired the concepts and aesthetics that were expressed by much of the Wu-Tang Clan's music. The wine was made by winemaker Andre Honecker, and you might think to yourself, where do I know him from? Well, first of all, he is the winemaker at Blumendahl Estate in Durbanville, which means that he's the man behind wines like the famous old vine Sauvignon Blanc Seder Terrasse. Seder Terrasse is the oldest bush vine Sauvignon Blanc in the entire country. Or perhaps you know him from the fact that the Blumendahl Canonberg White Blend 2017 recently won the trophy for best white blend at the Investec Trophy Wine Show. Or Perhaps you know him from his own range of wines, the Harnikum family wines, where his Langrach Malbec 2018 was the highest scoring Malbec in the entire South African Malbec challenge. If you have ever wondered what the letters NV mean on the label of a wine, well, it stands for non-vintage. Now, the South African Wine and Spirits Board currently state that if you want to state the vintage of a wine on the label, the wine must be made of at least 85% of fruit from that vintage. If the wine is made up of less than 85%, then you may not state the vintage on the label and instead replace that vintage with the letters NV. Now today's Golden Phoenix vs. the White Lotus is exactly such a non-vintage blend in that it is made with 35% Semillon from the 2020 vintage and 65% Sauvignon Blanc from the 2021 vintage. But its name is not derived simply from tangential references to the aforementioned vintage kung fu films. It also refers to the way in which Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon interact in this blend. Now the later harvested, richer, riper, sweeter Sauvignon Blanc component, which is far more full of yellow sunshine fruit, is represented by the Golden Phoenix. And the White Lotus is represented by the earlier harvested, slightly more herbal, greener tinged Semillon. Now it should be noted that when it comes to the way in which Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon interact in a blend like this, usually the acidity is on the side of Sauvignon Blanc and the body is on the side of Semillon. But in this wine that has been completely reversed. Okay, so birds and flowers are all good and well, but the wine is no good if it doesn't taste good in the glass. But when we give this guy a sniff, well, despite the fact that it is 65% Sauvignon Blanc, the very first thing to hit me is a rather heady whiff of lemongrass, which is something I always associate with Semillon. Then coming after that, there are elements of cut grass and also some white peach and even riper citrus and lime elements. Following on from those, there is also a rather mysterious and rustic potting soil element, which could have come from anywhere, really. Uh, and finally, an undeniable note of savory green pepper, which is controversial for some, but I think it's really important in this wine as a savory accent against some of the sweeter elements. Now, when we give this wine a sip, well, the first thing that hits us is a rather delightful fresh cut lime element, but this then segues into softer, riper uh, stone fruits and citrus, and even a sort of candied element of lime cordial. Now that shift from fresh lime into more candied lime cordial is something that is almost certainly facilitated by the fact that the semillon is matured in oak barrels, because some of those caramels and lactones take that fresh fruit and give it a kind of candied nature. One gets the same effect on certain wooded Chardonnays. And then just as you think the wine is fading and the party is over, there's this one last burst of quite ripe Nachi or Tsatsuma citrus, and that comes along with some oxidative saline elements. So the wine really is quite complex all the way through into the finish. Okay, so that's all we have time for today. But if you have any questions about blending Semillon with Sauvignon, or about Caravelle wines, or about Kyle Martin, the brain behind Caravelle wines, then 
leave a comment in the comment section and I will try and get back to you. And if you enjoyed the video, then support us on Patreon and subscribe to the Handring Solo YouTube channel where we publish at least six videos each month talking about things like wine science, wine history, unusual cultivars, and some of the rising winemaking stars to come out of the dynamic South African wine.